This is the hallway. We've turned on the fluorescent just so we can see the various things. There's the staircase leading out. Through this door is the attic room. What's the clock? That's uh, um, part of a stage set for one of my plays called The Ghost of Brooklyn. Uh huh. And it's made by Helen. And it was the clock in the train station waiting room. I love that clock. Here's a thing for Kembra, Samoa, and Edgar, and Happy Face, totally yeah. nude on film at the pyramid. Yes. Kembra silk screened those onto um, their old paper placemats that she got from. I don't know, some restaurant down on Rivington Street. Oh, Vincent Van Gogh left some of his paintings down there, I see. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a Bill Schwartz. Yeah. Is that worth anything, do you think? Probably. I bet you could sell that for a few grand. Probably. Is it signed? Just sign it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sexual astrology. Yes. You are but a figment of Edgar's imagination. Edgar's a figment of our imagination. I love the way that Andy reclines against the coffin, makes the coffin look so comfy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was a coffin. Is that like a baby? Child's coffin. Child's coffin. It was a present from Kendra. Mm -hmm. She used to use it in her shows. Okay, well, I think we're back where we started. There's the damaged phone. That he made. Brian would spend three quarters of his time doing like one prop for the show and then a quarter of his time doing everything else the show needed. <laughs> it's true. <Remember? laughs> he could be very frustrating to work with on stage shows, yes. But then, I mean, he could also throw stuff together at the last minute in an unbelievable way. And you would be making clothes, like in your place, where people played multiple roles. He would be taping would costumes be on, on it, yeah. And then they come off, and he'd have made a new costume. I know, for them and he went. would tape it onto them before they went out for their next entrance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody like that now. No, there isn't. And that was when, like, the tape gun, the hot glue, no one else was really doing that. That was, like, a brand new thing. Yeah, he was using materials that nobody else had ever used. And now everybody uses that stuff all the time. Yeah. Okay, well, Edgar, I think this winds down this segment of our taping, so is there anything else you'd like to tell us? I don't know who the us is, but tell us. when you do come to New York that I will still be in this house and oh. roaming aimlessly through the gutter. I think you should be here forever. The government should buy this house. For, it should be the Oliver 
library residence. Yes. <laughs> but if I do wind up in the gutter, I hope that I find a huge conch shell that I can move into. Because I, I have always thought that it might be fun to li live in a giant snail shell. You know. Um, I think that perhaps I was a snail at some point, and perhaps will be again. It's kind of like I'm turning back into one. <laughs> There's a, there's a snail inside the skull. <laughs> it's your inner snail. Yes. Get in touch with it. Yes. Aaron, can you tell us anything about your friend Edgar? For posterity? Not at the moment. Okay. Anything? Any Edgar remarks? Off the record. Okay, this is off the record. Go no, ahead. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? You, sir? I plead the fifth. Oh, it counts. Okay. <laughs> All right, Edgar. It is left to you to define yourself, then. Um, I'll define myself with glass of wine and a smile. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, Edgar. Beautiful creatures, wherever you are and wherever you are. All right. <laughs>